Hey guys, welcome back to Take a Look at Academics. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this algebraic equation. And make sure to stick until the end of the problem, where I have three bonus problems that are similar to this one, which you guys can try to solve. Alright, so I have 5x to the power of 5 minus 5x is equal to 0. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out 5. So if I factor out 5, I get 5 times, well, 5x to the power of 5 divided by 5, that's simply x to the power of 5, and negative 5x divided by 5 is simply negative x. So now this is equal to 0. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 5. So this way, we can just simply get rid of this 5, and it would be much easier to solve this equation. So now, these 5s are both going to cancel out, and 0 divided by 5, that's simply 0. So now I'm left with x to the power of 5 minus x is equal to 0. Now from here, I can go ahead and factor out x. So if I factor out x from here, I get x times x to the power of 4 minus 1 is equal to 0. And now this gives me two equations. I have x is equal to 0, and I also have x to the power of 4 minus 1 is equal to 0. So x equals 0, this is already a solution right here, so we already have one solution to our original equation, and we can find our other solutions from this equation. So x to the power of 4 minus 1 equals 0. Well, x to the power of 4, well, 4 here, this is the same thing as 2, 2 times 2. So if I replace 2 times 2 with 4, I get x to the power of 2 times 2 minus 1 is equal to 0. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, we can write this as a to the power of m to the power of n. So x to the power of 2 times 2 is going to be x to the power of 2 to the power of 2. And 1, this is the same thing as 1 squared. So I have minus 1 squared is equal to 0. Now, if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is the same thing as a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, a is going to be x squared, and b is going to be 1. So now I have x squared plus 1 times x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. So now this gives me two equations. I have x squared plus 1 is equal to 0, and I have x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. So x, let's first start with x squared minus 1 equals 0. I'm going to first add 1 on both sides. And these two cancel out, and I'm left with x squared is equal to 1. Now I'm going to be taking the square root on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and left with x is equal to the square root of 1, which is actually equal to positive or negative 1. So these are two more solutions to a problem. Now for x squared plus 1 equals 0, I'm going to subtract 1 on both sides. So now I have x squared is equal to negative 1. Now if I take the square root on both sides, these two cancel out, and left with x is equal to, well, the square root of negative 1, this is actually equal to, I. So now I have x is equal to i. So my solutions are x is equal to 0, 1, negative 1, and i. So these are my four solutions to this problem. All right, so I have x to the power of 3 is equal to x to the power of 5. So now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract x to the power of 3 on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I'm left with x to the power of 5 minus x to the power of 3 is equal to 0. So now, I'm going to factor out x to the power of 3. 
So now I have x to the power of 3 times x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. So now this is going to give me two equations. I have x to the power of 3 is equal to 0. And I have x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. So for x to the power of 3 equals 0, I'm going to take the cube root on both sides. The cube root x to the power of 3 is simply x, and the cube root of 0 is 0. So x equals 0 is one solution. Now I have x squared minus 1 equals 0. So now I'm going to add 1 on both sides. So now these two are going to cancel out, and I'll be left with x squared is equal to 1. Now, if I take the square root on both sides, these two cancel out, and I'll put x is equal to positive or negative 1. So these are two more solutions to our problem. So now, our three, three solutions to this problem are 0, 1, and negative 1. So now to check my original equation was x to the power of 3 is equal to x to the power of 5. So let's first check 0. So if x equals 0, I have 0 to the power of 3 is equal to 0 to the power of 5. Now 0 to the power of 3, this is the same thing as 0. And 0 to the power of 5 is the same thing as 0. So 0 works. Now let's try 1. I have x to the power of 3 is equal to x to the power of 5. Now if x is equal to 1, I have 1 to the power of 3 is equal to 1 to the power of 5. 1 to the power of 3 is 1, and 1 to the power of 5 is 1. So this works as well. Now finally, we have negative 1. So I have negative 1 to the power of 3 is equal to negative 1 to the power of 5. Negative 1 to the power of 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 to the power of 5 is negative 1. So this works as well. So these are my three solutions to this problem. All right, so I have 5 to the power of x is equal to 7. Now I want to find the value of x. So for my solution, first start with 5 to the power of x is equal to 7. Now, I'm going to take the log on both sides. So now I have log 5 to the power of x is equal to log 7. Now, if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can actually move this x1 and b to the front of the logarithm. So this would equal b times log a. And this, important, this property is really important because let's say I have 7 to the power of x is equal to 14. So right now, as you can see, x is really hard to solve for because if x is an exponent, it's going to be really hard to solve for, especially when we know that x is going to be a decimal because 7 to the power of 1, this is equal to 7, and 7 to the power of 2, this is equal to 49. And 14 is somewhere in between 7 and 49, meaning x is somewhere in between 1 and 2. And solving for this in the form that it is, is really hard. So now if we change it by taking the log on both sides, now I can move x to the front. And now, as you can see, x is a real term, and it's much simpler to solve for it. All I have to do is divide both sides by log 7. Now these two are out, and I have x is equal to log 14 over log 7. So it's actually really simple when you use this property. So now I'm doing this is what I'm doing for 5 to the power of x is equal to 7. So now I had log 5 to the power of x is equal to log 7. Now I can move x to the front. So now I have x times log 5 is equal to log 7. Now I can go ahead and divide both sides by log 5. So now these two are going to cancel out. And I'll have to have x is equal to log 7 over log 5. Now log 7 
this is equal to 0 0.8451 and log 5. This is equal to 0 0.6990. So now I have 0 0.8451 over 0 0.6990, which is equal to approximately 1.2090. So this is my answer.